This video presentation is an overview of our final year project done under the guidance of Professor Kandaba Kumar Sharma. The title of our project is Energy Harvesting Using Piezoelectric Sensors and Making a Low Power DC Charging System. This is the outline of our project that we are going to discuss in this presentation. Energy is an overwhelming need in the present and future world. With each passing day, more and more unrenewable resources are getting depleted because of unconventional ways of using it without thinking about the future needs. So we need to practice sustainable form of energy that meets the present requirements without compromising the need for future generation. There are many renewable energy sources such as solar, wind, thermal and vibration which are harvested and used. In our project, we have used vibration or mechanical stress as a source of energy. We know that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. So we thought of using a form of energy that we can get from our daily activities like walking, driving, etc. When we walk, we put pressure onto the ground. That energy goes completely unnoticed and gets wasted. So if we can harvest that energy, then we can contribute a part to a greener environment. Therefore, the primary objective of our work is to design a footstep power generation system using piezoelectricity concept. This is the literature review of our project. We have stated the names and their findings accordingly. With a detailed review of certain related literature, the following problems are identified as stated. Here is the generic block diagram of our proposed model. This is the description of components mentioned in the generic block diagram. This is the pictorial representation of the list of components that we have used in our entire project. This is the methodology of our project. It is divided into six stages as stated. This is the flowchart of our design authentication system for the project. We use authentication system to let user access the energy when correct password is entered. This part of work done falls in phase one of our project. Here we state the three possible piezo sensor arrangements for the footboard. We have chosen series parallel combination because as per the stated reference, if we consider one connection out of the two arrangements which is series or parallel, we get either less current or less voltage. Other complications of series connection is that if one sensor breaks in the middle, the whole circuit will stop working. Though parallel connection solves this issue but has less voltage, so it is not feasible. In series parallel combination, both the complications of series and parallel are solved as it balances both current and voltage measures as well as fixes the breaking of circuit if one sensor gets damaged, as shown in the figure. We need to design the piezo sensors in such a way that efficient transfer of mechanical stress happens on it, as we can see the pressure point performance of a piezo sensor in the figure, so it gave us an overall idea to fix the issue. We use double-sided tape to concentrate the stress on the center of the sensor. Two layers of tapes are used to increase the durability of the sensors. After arranging the piezo sensors in series parallel combination and designing the piezo sensors for efficiency, we connect it to a DSO and we got the waveform as shown in the figure. We have obtained an AC waveform and for application purpose we need to convert it to DC. So there was the need of a rectifier circuit. There are many rectifier circuits such as half wave rectifiers and full wave rectifiers. But the rectification efficiency of full wave is double than that of half wave rectifier. So half wave rectifier cannot be used. There are two types of full wave rectifiers, center tipped and bridge rectifier. Advantage of bridge rectifier over center tipped is that it does not require center tape transformer which increases the size and cost of the whole setup. Bridge rectifier circuit is shown in the figure. We use four diodes where two diodes work at a time to give full wave rectification. We can see the DC output from the graph on DSO after connecting the bridge rectifier to the design footboard of piezo sensors. This part of work done falls in phase two of our project done in our eighth semester. Since output from piezo sensors is very small, we need voltage multipliers to increase the output. Voltage multipliers are also rectifier circuits, which converts low AC voltage to high DC voltage. Doubler, tripler and quadrupler are different types of circuits where voltage gets doubled, tripled and so on. Normal charger output voltage rating is 5 volts and as we are making a low scale charging system, we need to maintain that so that the battery does not get damaged. 
1.7 volts is the maximum voltage reading we got from the footboard using DSO when pressure is applied. By theoretical calculation, we can see that tripler circuit almost equals charge output voltage reading, so we can use tripler circuit. The circuit design is shown in the figure. These are the comparison graphs of different combinations of capacitor values in tripler circuit. These comparison graphs are made using simulation software. From the reasons stated, we conclude that graph 1 gives the best result having less ripples compared to graph 4 and 5, and also there is more ripple and negative voltage in graph 2 and 3. So graph 1 combination of capacitors are used for tripler circuit. We can see the effect of tripler from the graph. The graph plotted in red shows twice the input voltage, and blue plot is the normal input AC voltage. From the graph we can see there are ripples. To avoid ripples, we need filter circuit. There are many filter circuits, but pi filter is efficient one for reducing ripples because it has two capacitors. So we are using pi filter. These are the comparison graphs of different combination of capacitor and inductor values in pi filter when connected across the tripler circuit. These comparison graphs are made using simulation software again. From the reason stated here, we can conclude that graph 1 and 2 have more ripples compared to graph 3, 4 and 5. Graph 3, 4 and 5 give same output to some extent because 10 microhenry is readily available. We use graph 4 combination of capacitor and inductors in pi filter. We can see the effect of pi filter circuit from the graph. The graph plotted in red shows the unfiltered output from the tripler circuit and the blue plot shows the filtered output after using the pi filter. Now the filtered output needs to be stored. There are two options for it. First is the capacitor and second is the battery. As per preference stated, we conclude that the battery needs more time to charge by PZT material, which will be not feasible for our project. In case of capacitors for charging, there is no minimum voltage. It charges immediately and gives immediate access to energy. The capacitor gets charged till it equals source voltage. Ideal capacitor will maintain its state of fully charged but real capacitor slowly discharges due to internal leakage. Another thing that we have to notice while charging a capacitor is the voltage rating. The capacitor should not be exposed to higher voltage than its rating or it may get damaged. As per the reference stated, a capacitor gets charged exponentially. The charging time depends on the time constant which is given by the product of resistance and capacitor and is represented by tau. Theoretically, capacitor gets fully charged in 5 times of time constant. Charging time calculation is shown in this section. The voltage across capacitor is given by the following formula. Your Vc is the voltage across capacitor and Vs is the voltage source. So if we suppose Vs equals to 6.30 from Vc at t equal to 1 seconds and t equals to 25 seconds, we can see that the capacitor gets fully charged at t equal to 25 seconds and equals almost to the source voltage. In this section, we talk about the charging system with user authentication module. After the filtered output is kept in a temporary storage medium, this is the capacitor. For the people to access energy through charging port, we built an authentication system module using Arduino Uno microcontroller. It grants access to unique users for using the charging port. For demo purpose and simulation, we have used keypad lock for authentication process and LCD display to show user information. We have also used a relay as a switch to close the connection between the storage medium and the charging port. Thus when the relay is high, the battery in the charging port gets connected as the circuit closes itself and the user gets the access. As the relay is controlled by the user authentication module, if the password is incorrect then the relay gets low, thus cutting off the connection between the battery and the charging port, and so the user doesn't have the access. This is the design of charging system with user authentication module using Tinkercad software simulation. This is the result taken from project phase 1. Here the table shows the DSO reading of single step on piezo sensor footboard. Here we have taken several number of readings. Here is the video demonstration of charging a smartwatch.
Here the simulation of the working of voltage multiplier and filter circuit and its effect on the charging capacitor is shown. In the simulation we are plotting voltage across storage medium capacitor by comparing the graph of a constant voltage source and varied voltage source at different time stems. The constant voltage is taken as 1.725 volts as per the generalized data from project phase 1 work. Since energy generated by piezo sensors depends on the pressure applied, so the output voltage may vary at time stems so we try to replicate it in the simulation. From time 0 to 2 seconds, both voltage sources are set to same voltage so no change is seen. Here from time 2 to 6 seconds, voltage graph is shown where V2 is constant at 1.72 volts and V1 is changed to 1.6 volts. Here we can see the change. Here from time 6 to 16 seconds, voltage graph is shown where V2 is constant at 1.72 volts and V1 is changed to 1.5 volts from 1.6 volts. And we can see the change in the graph of the voltage across capacitor. Here from time 16 to 30 seconds, voltage graph is shown where V2 is constant at 1.72 volts and V1 is changed to 1.72 volts from 1.6 volts. Thus we get 5.56 volts at time 30 seconds. And we can see that there is a slight change when compared with the graph of constant voltage source of 1.72 volts. Here we are stating about the design of authentication system using Arduino and other sensors. To show our simulation, we are using a software called Tinkercad. Because of lack of some features, we have to consider some analogy component to demonstrate our authentication system. A 9V battery is used to demonstrate the storage medium. To show the USB port getting energy when correct password is entered, we used a bulb to demonstrate it. For simulation purpose, we timed the relay for 3 seconds, but practically it will be timed for 30 minutes to let users charge their devices. Here is the video of the simulation. In this section, we discuss about the future improvisations of our project. The piezo sensors could be specially fabricated to prevent damage from climatic conditions like temperature, humidity, etc. The size of the sensors could be increased to yield more efficient output. Charging speed could be increased further if we manage to implement a better current gain circuit. The output voltage could be enlarged on busy footpaths and roads if this idea gets implemented in a large industrial scale. A more researched and advanced design of this project might increase the output efficiency. In this section, we conclude our project in the following points. Today the hunger for energy is sweeping away the fossil fuels at a much faster rate without thinking about nature and the needs of the future generation. Thus there is a need for a working alternative and sustainable source of energy. Keeping in view about this scenario, our model aims at contributing a sustainable source of energy with an approach to a greater environment. Our project is a step towards building a low-scale power generation device aiming to charge low-powered electronic gadgets such as charging mobiles, smartwatches, etc. If proper research and development in the field of piezoelectricity could be done, it could prove to be a big success towards providing a greener environment to humankind.